George Billing. Yes, sir. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, for admitting this uh, very important college, uh, short duration discussion on the price rise that is affecting the people in the state, sir. So I do agree with the Honorable CM, sir, that a lot of concerns have been raised by members on various topics that we have discussed on the floor of this House in the past two, three days. In fact, sir, it would be in the interest of the people, sir, if the time also could be extended maybe till five or six o'clock or so, if required, sir, to dispose of the businesses that have been listed, sir. But, sir, I think in the wisdom of the Honourable Speaker, we have been given extended time, but I think that time also is still limited. <laughs> sir, the economic interests of the people is of utmost importance importance when it comes to protecting their savings, their earnings, and ensuring that they can live a life that fulfills the needs of their families. So the protection of the economic interest of a people lies in the way that they are able to earn and spend their earnings. If they have to spend more due to inflation, due to high cost, they can save less. And that is a major concern, sir, for all of us here. With the multiple needs of every family, every father, every mother, every parent is thinking on how to pay for the needs of the families. Considering the abrupt rise in prices of nearly all the commodities in the market, sir. So we are at a time where, due to the pandemic, incomes have also shrunk, but expenses have gone up due to price rise. So all families are burdened with travelling costs, electricity bills, cost on the, the food items, fuel, water supply, especially in school and college fees, which has burdened them a lot. So, the problem of skyrocketing prices of essential commodities has become a cause of great concern for the people of the state, sir. Just in the month of June, the price of all essential vegetables saw a whooping increase of 20 to 40 rupees per kilo. Sir, the rise in the price of beef due to the shortage of supply has gone up up to 600 rupees per kilo, therefore depriving of families on an item that they really relish. So the burden of price rise due to the imposition of GST on various items also led to the increase of at least 2 rupees per kilo on rice. On pulses, there's an increase of 4 to 5 rupees per kilo. And on the labelled and pre-packaged form of food items, 5% increase due to GST imposition. We are being taxed heavily on the food items that we have, sir. So, apart from the food items, we are seeing a lot of problems that has come because of the GST rates. We do not know as to what efforts the government has taken to take it up with the government of India. We would like to know as to whether any kind of protest has been made in the GST Council on how the GST rates have affected, the GST rates on the food items have affected the households across the state and country, sir. So the rise in fuel prices definitely leads to the skyrocketing prices that we see in all commodities. 
Just recently, the state government has also increased the tax on petrol and diesel, which further burdens the citizens. Sir, with the rise on the petrol and diesel prices, we see that there is a huge rise in the cost of transportation. In addition to this, sir, as we are all dependent on road transport, for the transportation of commodities from different parts of the country to the state, there is this hue and cry amongst the transporters that while flying from Guwahati to Shillong, they are burdened at every check post to pay illegally and there is illegal collection along the highway from Guwahati to Shillong. When we sit with the transporters, sir, they tell us that they have to pay at least 7,000 to 8,000 rupees per vehicle. And this is added on to the cost of the consumers. Sir, the check gates, especially the district council check gates, that have been put up illegally, which the government has also admitted and sent its letter to the district council on the illegal toll gates that have been put up across the state. But then no reply has come, no action has been seen on the ground, therefore further burdening the consumers with high costs. Sir, apart from the burden on the households due to the skyrocketing prices and the inflation, there's another aspect also which we cannot ignore, that the per capita income of the state also has dropped. As per the National Statistical Office in FY2122, there was a decline of 1.8% in the state's per capita income. So, sir, on one hand, the households are being burdened with High prices, on the other hand, the households have lesser income to spend. So we can imagine, sir, the burden on, we, on the, our households, on our citizens. Post-pandemic, the economy has, has been very grim, and this decline, I think we are one of the highest in the country in terms of the decline in the per, per capita income, just after Uttar Pradesh and other states. Sir, the drop in the per capita income also indicates unemployment. When we sit with our constituents and listen to the problem, sir, many youths, many elderly citizens, they come and complain that there is no wage employment. There is no delay with employment. Just today, there was this start question which could not come up for disposal, sir, where the MG and RJ dues that has to be paid to these vendors across the state has touched 320 crores. And this is still pending for payment. Due to this, we can also see, sir, the effects of the huge pendency and the delayed payment that this year the wage employment under MG and RGA also has come down. The percentage that actually has to be generated has come down drastically because most of the VCs are not taking up work. So therefore, sir, again, lesser income for the households, more burden. So one Observation and also complaint that has come from contractors. Normally, sir, the class two and class three contractors belonging to the middle class families, they are one of the biggest contributors to the state's economy because they have local purchases, they also have local wage laborers, and the class two contractors and class three contractors that are engaged across all departments, they have been ignored due to less work. 
This is a concern. Most of them, even though having been registered with the departments, but then there is no work. This is one key factor that usually drives the economy, sir, because the, the income goes directly to the middle class families, directly to the daily wage laborers, especially the locals, and local purchases in terms of materials. This concern I am flagging to draw the attention of the government, sir, because even though investments have come to the state for big projects, but mostly these projects are being handled by big companies, these projects are handled by class one contractors that rely on heavy machinery for this, the construction activities. But for the other activities that are labor driven and labor intensive through class two and class three registered contractors, that needs attention, sir, and it cannot be ignored. Considering this huge drop in the per capita income, sir, I think infusion of funds through these contributors to, of the economy to the contractors that we have, the local contractors, they will be of great benefit as the income and the resource will go directly to the households across the state, sir. Sir, the issue of price rise is complex. We understand that due to multiple factors, this some may be beyond the powers of the state government to control. But effective measures can be put in. The corrupt practices, if they are there and complained by the people, they should be stopped. So that at least the activities that we are seeing and the complaints that have come from transporters, the illegal toll gates that have been set up across the state, and any other illegal activity, if it further burdens and brings in added costs, on the consumers, this needs to be checked. Apart from this, sir, the infusion of funds through the MGNRGA, which has seen, which has been a great contributor to the state's economy, and bringing in uh, wage employment to the people in the rural areas, this needs to speed it up, so that at least, sir, this year, people will see employment at the village level, and this past six months, which has been very, very negative in terms of growth of the employment program, we can, should see that people are given enough support. So that whatever burden is coming to the increase in prices and inflation, we can at least support our families with better wage incomes and better avenues of livelihoods. So these are my few of my opening remarks on this uh, short dur duration discussion, sir. And perhaps I've drawn some attention of the government to the problems that are being faced by the people in the state and being we also are being burdened by this uh, issue of price rise and inflation. Sir. So with these few submissions, sir, I resume my seat.